good morning and again welcome to the um, troubleshooting call manager dial plan using the dialed number analyzer and the route plan report. These are two features in call manager that I think are highly underutilized. Um, folks don't necessarily know how to read a dialed number analyzer output and, and understand what it means. And I know many, many administrators who rarely, if ever, go into the route plan report. And that's especially handy for troubleshooting. Does something exist? We, you know, where can I find it? Um, what, what other matches might there be? These are the kinds of things that the route plan report can tell us. So this is where we're headed today. Now, the first thing I would like to do before we get um, underway is to talk for just a second, just to review really quickly. In a globalized call routing environment, because that's what we're going to be working with today. In a globalized call routing environment, how are digits manipulated in the first place? Because that's, you know, that's where we're going. The first thing to remember is that once original information is established in call manager, it can only be manipulated one time. And by that, I mean this. Let's suppose I've got a phone. Oh, wow, I am not used to drawing on the big screen. Um, let's suppose I've got a phone. And let's suppose that the phone number on that phone is plus one, two, oh, one, two, oh, one. Oops, two, oh, one. Two thousand one. Um, and then let's also suppose that's so that's going to be our caller ID. And let's suppose that I dial something like um, eight two three thousand one. Now this is the number is supposed to get me to a uh, um, I can't I can't work with this. Let me switch screens here. Um, do, 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 do. Let me to do a different share. We're going to share screen two. And uh, okay, then I'm going to move this over here. And I'm just going to do a blank. Oh, I guess I don't have that availability in this one, do I? All right, so then if I go like that, This computer is not my normal presentation computer. So let me switch and forgive me, please, uh, please bear with me while I'm doing this so slideshow. Um, need to move this over and I need to change. If anybody knows how to do this, by the way, which is my, which, uh, how do I make uh, PowerPoint be the, um, well, you know what? I'm not even gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is this. I'll just open up a notepad file and make it full screen. Ha, I win. Okay, so getting back. Let's suppose I've got a phone um, and that phone has uh, plus one, 201, 201, 2001 as its caller ID. And let's suppose I dial something like 823001. Now, I will tell you that in our environment, the purpose of this number is to go over an intercluster trunk to another cluster. And what it's going to target in that other cluster is a phone that is plus one, 301, 301, 3001. So how do I get from here to here? I'm going to have the trunk that goes over. And presumably, my call manager is going to want to change the number prior to it being going over. So here's the deal. I'm going to hit a translation pattern. Now, this is our original information at the moment, right? These two numbers, because that was what was actually dialed. A translation pattern is the one thing in call manager that can change original information. And I'll talk about why this is important here in just a second. So the translation pattern says, well, if you see anything that starts with 8-2, right? What you're going to want to do is discard pre dot and add on plus one, 301, 301. Okay, so now, gee, I've got the number in the right format. The translation pattern is then going to go and hit my, um, my slash uh, um, plus bang route pattern. And I might even have a route pattern saying, well, if you see plus one, 301, and then 10 digits, send it over the trunk to the, the other cluster. And here's where things get interesting. A route pattern 
hits a route list. A route list has route groups in it. And then a route group is going to have something like a trunk in it. At the route pattern level, I can do digit manipulation. I can do discard instructions and prefix instructions and transform instructions. When the route pattern hands off a call to the route list, right? So I, I hit the route pattern, I make whatever digit manipulations they're gonna be at the route pattern. The route pattern hands it off to the route list. When you add a route group into a route list, I can do digit manipulation here also. This is a second place I can do digit manipulation. And the reason I make a point about the original information is when the route pattern hands information out to the route group, uh, route list, route group structure, it's going to send the information, you know, the output of the route pattern, and it's also going to send the original information. Why? Because if I do digit manipulation at the route group level, it's going to discard anything done at the route pattern and any digit manipulation I'm going to do is going to be on the original information. Once the route group has then selected on its, did its thing and selected an egress like a trunk, the route group is going to send to the trunk whatever its digit manipulation is and then also the original information. And if I'm doing digit manipulation on the trunk and in an E164 for, uh, environment, that's where we do our digit manipulation, right? Uh, calls and calling party transformation, calling search spaces on an egress basis. Um, you know, again, it's going to, if it's going to do digit manipulation, it is going to discard anything done prior and work on the original information. So it's important to understand when we're looking at valid number analyzer, when we're looking at um, the route plan report, and I will show you where this is in the route plan, in the, the dialed number analyzer, you can see at each step, it will show original information and manipulated information. I mention this again because this is our original information. That is what would get passed along from step to step until the call goes out unless I hit a translation pattern. If I do it, hit a translation pattern, the translation pattern egress, whatever is the output of the translation pattern is now our new original information. So, okay, great. Let's take a look at a call and see what we see. So let me go ahead and minimize this. And let me bring up my remote PC where I've got a bunch of phones and I'm gonna go ahead and minimize some of these. All right, I'm going to bring this down. So here I've got two devices. I've got a um, uh, two devices. They're both registered to an HQ call manager. They're both in the same sub, uh, the same uh, system. You can see the E164 numbers, and indeed, my um, the DNs on the phones are E164 format. In many organizations, though, if I have two devices at the same site. I'm going to want to be able to dial, let's say four digits or five digits or something. And in our case, what we want to be able to dial is four digits. So I should be able to pick up my originating phone, dial four digits, the last four of the other phone, and the call is going to fail. So let's see if we can figure out why that's happening. Let me bring down the call manager. And we're going to start, I'm going to move this then up here, my notes, right? Um, um, what we should be able to do with those two phones is I should be able to dial from phone A to phone B with four digits. And the caller ID that should set, show up on phone B should be also in four digits because that's what I'd be dialing back. Now, again, both DNs on both phones are in E164 format. So on my call manager. Let's start by looking at the dialed number analyzer. To bring up the dialed number analyzer and call manager while I'm bringing this up, you can, once you start, there's a pair of services to start, but once you do, you put in the IP address of your call manager, usually publisher, and um, suffix it rather than with like CCM admin, you suffer, suffix it with DNA. Bringing this up. 
Okay, analysis, right? With the dialed number analyzer, we are going to be using a phone. So I'll be selecting phones here. And once I select a phone, I can say, well, which DN, which line on the phone is dialing what digits or a SIP URI. I can specify time of day um, if I'm doing time of day based call routing. And so, um, um, you know, do this analysis. In addition, I can say, well, if a specific set of information comes in over a trunk or comes in over like an MGCP or H323 gateway, what are you going to do? I like the fact that I can do ingress as well as egress. So let's take a look at our phone here. I'm selecting phones and I'm on my HQ call manager cluster. So I'm just going to have the two phones. There are actually three because there's a Jabber client also I'm going to be using later. Right. So I've got HQ phone one and HQ phone two. That's um, I'm sorry. Uh, this phone is going to be dialing this phone. So I'm going to use this phone. And I can see that the phone is registered. I see its current IP address. You can do a DNA analysis even if an originating phone is not registered. If I have multiple lines, it will say which line I'm going to try to, to use. And then with dial digits, I'm going to say I'm dialing 2002. Once you've done that, notice again, I can put in time of day based call routing. I can do um, uh, uh, URI style dialing and all that, do analysis. Now it's gonna say it does not have a match. And I will tell you why as soon as it decides to come up. Um, as it happens, I have, I just remembered, I have a, a it was one of the things I was meant to, meant to edit. I do have a, um, a time schedule on one of the, the um, one of the uh, partitions. So let me go get rid of that. Uh, Partition. And so let me do that and then we'll just run that analysis again here. Okay, let's do that again. Just do it the old fashioned way, I guess. Okay, so I'm going back to my phone. I'm using line one and I'm dialing 2002. Okay, so route this pattern. It says I found a match. And yet if I go into my PC and I actually try to do that dial, if, uh, we just saw it doesn't work, does it? So what's going on? Let's take a look at our dialed number analyzer output. I'm going to make this big and do call flow. The first thing I want you to note is this called party transform or the called party the you know this is showing you right up front what the eventual uh, you know thing it's going to actually ring is. And if you look closely 201 201 I'm missing a digit here at the end aren't I? And this is what we're going to go troubleshoot. I can see which pattern it matches, right? It's matching my slash plus bang route pattern. And here we go, call flow, translation patterns first. This is the call processing that call manager is doing. The translation pattern is 2.xxx in this HQ partition. Notice the pre-transform calling and called party. This is the original information. I can see if it's going to do call ing party manipulation. I can see if it's going to do called party manipulation. And it's doing a couple of things here. It's discarding pre dot and it's doing a prefix. So this is the original, this is the eventual called party. Where I'm going with this is the dialed number analyzer is showing you how call manager is going about manipulating the digits here, right? I started off by dialing four digits. It's not ringing, but what, what is call manager doing? Because the eventual called number is doesn't match anything internal to the call manager, you can see that it's trying to send it out the PSTN here via the system route list and the, the slash plus bang route pattern. So what we need to do here, if you note, is fix this translation pattern. This is telling us exactly where 
this thing is. It's a translation pattern. It's the 2.xxx. I have a dot in here and it is, oops, and it, uh, I have a dot in there um, and it is indeed, um, uh, you know, taking, doing that thing. So let's go back into call manager and let's go take a look at that translation pattern. And I've got my 2.xxx here. And you know, what would I want to do? Well, I do want to prefix the remainder of the called party, right? Because this is the full E164 number of the target phone. What I don't want to do is have that dot there. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the dot. And you can see as soon as I do that, that makes this discard instruction not work anymore. I'm going to save it. And now the call should work. What we're going to note, though, is that the call is going to work, but the caller ID is going to be wrong. So let's try this call. New call, 2002. I'm going to go ahead and note the caller ID. The caller ID should be in four digit format because I'm calling a four digit number and it's not. So let's go back to our dialed number analyzer and see if we can figure out why. Let me close this. And dial number analyzer. And guess what? I'm still calling the same number. I'm still calling from the same line. I'm calling the same digits. So I can just do analysis again. And it's saying again, route this pattern. And when it does because we know it rang. Our call flow now again hits the translation pattern. And we can see that the call ing party not being manipulated, and that's normal. Called party is now changing it into a regular old number that we like. And I can see that it's matching after that, not some kind of a route list, but it's matching the directory numbers. So it tells us not only what the digit manipulation is, but also where is the call getting pathed. So it's being sent to a DN. It will tell us what phones this is on. If it's on more than one phone, it would show you. And it's going to show um, um, uh, yeah, the information on that DN. Huh. Well, there's a problem with that. And that is that what I don't see is how call manager is manipulating the call ing party as the call enters the phone. So let's do a quick little drawing again. So the underlying idea of globalized call routing is that you're going to globalize on ingress. You're going to have anything that somebody dials turned into an E164 number. And then as we send things to a target, we are going to localize it for, you know, however the target likes it. If it's going to a router or a gateway or a, or a trunk, we'll localize it before we send it. As we're sending it off to a phone, we're not going to be localizing the dialed number because call manager already targeted the phone. So we know the called parties, right? Call manager does localize, though, the call ing party. So um, uh, what we need to do is figure out why the caller ID is not getting set properly. What I should have somewhere in my route plan, somewhere, I don't know where, but somewhere in my route pattern, my route plan, I should have something that looks like, oh boy, that was wrong should have something that looks like this. If you see plus one, 201, 201, discard pre-dot, right? If I'm saying that the called call-ing party should not be in E164 format, the call-ing party should be in four-digit format, then I should have something that looks like that in my route plan. Now, as we saw, the dialed number analyzer is not showing us you know, what might be there. So let's see if we can figure out how the, um, the, uh, the call manager is uh, dealing with, um, you know, this, if we can find this. Where can I go and look at um, anything that's dialable on my system? Well, I can look in the route plan report. So here, let's take a look at the route plan report to do this troubleshooting. I'm going to search for this pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of this. I'm going to close my analysis here. 
go back to call manager, call routing, route plan report. And when you're working with the route plan report, you can look at all sorts of things. You can look at uh, just translation patterns, just voicemail pilot numbers, just uh, URIs, just things learned from your um, ILS network. What we're going to be looking at is a, um, a, a pattern or a directory number. And I want to see the directory number where, um, I'm sorry, I don't know where this pattern is. So I'm going to look at all patterns. And I want to see anything that begins with um, plus one, two, oh, one, two, oh, one. And I can see I have a bunch of things here. So one of these three things should be assigned to my phone to take called party, calling party information and manipulate it. So let's take a look at the partitions that these are in. Backbone call in party out. Yeah, that probably doesn't apply. I mean, if you kind of think about it, right? Uh, backbone call in party, that means I'm trying to change calling party as I'm going off cluster. Same thing with um, this one, BR2 phone in. That's not my cluster or that not my site. The site I'm working with is the HQ site. So let's take a look at this guy here, HQ phone in, and let's see what it's doing. Well, I can see that I've got this thing that I would expect. And it is indeed discarding pre dot. So what this tells me is that I should be able to have um, this should work, right? Uh, this uh, call in party phone in is the calling party transformation CSS. It's a calling party transformation that my phone should be using to modify calls as it's coming in. So it's here and it is correctly configured. So thinking about this, we use the dialed number analyzer to follow the path of the call. And we got as far as it hitting the phone. We know it's going to ring the phone. It rings the phone fine. It's not manipulating the caller ID properly. So we're going to be looking at the route plan report to see things that should be used to modify the calling party. And this is it. And it's correctly configured. So. What the route plan report and the dialed number analyzer are telling us is that from a digit manipulation standpoint, everything's correctly configured. So what is the other possibility here? The other possibility from a troubleshooting standpoint is the phone isn't using this. If I go to my phones now, there is a field on the phone, and this phone is also um, Make sure I have the right one. Um, and this um, field can be set either at the device pool level or at the physical device level. But it is the field that, that the calling search space that a phone uses to um, work with digit manipulation on an inbound basis. And that's this guy right here. Remote number. Call in party transformations for calls coming into this phone. That would be this. Now, notice this says use device pool calling party transformation. Chances are all the phones in this device pool would probably need the same set of digit manipulations. It's all the same site, right? So smart money is to set it at the device pool. This phone is in the um, default device pool. So let's go to that device pool. And I can see a call in party transformation CSS. And this should be set to HQ phone in CSS. Um, the um, uh, you know, names of these partitions and calling search spaces that we're using in this um, example here are right out of Cisco's playbook. So it, you may have seen things like this before. You'd have the site name and then phone in, phone out, calling party, call party, that kind of thing. OK, we've set it. Let's try it out. As we've noted before, I should be able to, oh, it's got to come back here. Debbie communicators take a little longer. Any questions about any of this so far? No. Everybody, everybody good? OK. Yes. Cool. Thank you. OK. So let's try our call again. 
new call. And I can see that my caller ID is now correctly configured. Yay. So there's an example for internal dialing of using a um, uh, the dial number analyzer and the route plan report to, to um, analyze. And we got to use those two features to analyze two things. First of all, the digit manipulation itself, which was wrong. And the other thing we were able to uh, figure out is that the digit manipulation at some point was correctly configured, but not being used. So the next example I would like to show you is the example of using a, um, excuse me, I gotta change the size of this real quick so I can see my notes, right? Um, look, what about an intercluster call? What about a call going between two clusters? Um, you know, how, how, how should that work? Well, we have the same sort of idea behind it. In um, the case of our intercluster call, let's talk about digit manipulation. Now, in our case, I've got a call that's going to be coming from my HQ location, and it's going to be going over to my backbone location. I've got a phone over here, and that's that plus one, 201, 201, 2001 phone. Excuse me. And the, the, the backbone here just has a phone in there, and it's just, um, excuse me, 5001. That's, that's all there is. So I need a couple of things. First of all, what am I going to dial? I'm going to be dialing an inter-site code, um, 84, and then those four digits, 5001. That's what I'm going to dial. And what am I going to hit? In the case of this particular call manager, I have a trunk and, uh, attached to a route pattern. And that route pattern is, if you see 84, then send it over that trunk. So as the phone is sending information into call manager, there is a place where I can change the caller ID based on the, the call ing device. We're not doing that. We have everything in E164 format. That's what we want. In this particular case, we are not going to use in, uh, E164 numbers for inter-site calling. We are later on in this particular setup, we would do it like an ILS network to, to advertise these things. But right now I just got a route pattern. Okay. So on an egress basis, remember, I can do digit manipulation at the route pattern level. I can do digit manipulation at the route group in the route list level. And I can also do it on the trunk. So first things first, let's see if this call succeeds. If it succeeds, the caller ID I should see over here should be 81201, right? Remember five digits or six digits is what I'm dialing. So I'm dialing this. The caller ID should show up like that because that's what it would call back. Let's see what my HQ is sending. So again, we're going to go into the HQ cluster. And now I'm going to be using a phone again. Actually, I'm going to use the same phone, but this time I'm going to dial 845001. And I'm going to do analysis. And it says route this pattern. Which pattern is it matching? Well, it's matching this 845XXX pattern. Cool, that's what we expected. Is it doing digit manipulation as the call is leaving? Now, in a production environment like this, you have two choices with E164. I can either set the caller ID on an intercluster call to be the enterprise number, the 8, you know, 1, 2001, as the call is leaving my call manager, or if I'm floating stuff around, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the cluster in between the clusters, let's leave everything at E164 and change it as it's going to go actually hit its target. Because I might be doing, you know, alternate pathing for PSTN calls and such. And so leaving things in E164 format is a smart money. So let's see what it, this, our call manager is doing. It should be leaving, says um, the route pattern, right? Uh, Pre-transform, this is the originating information called party, 
not being changed at the route pattern. What about calling party? Calling party is also not being altered at this point. Is it being altered at the route group in the route list, route list level? Let's see. The route list is the BB route list. It's hitting the BB route group. And am I doing digit manipulation here? Well, here again is my originating information. Remember I said at each stop, the original information goes and also any transforms. Again, not doing a transform at the route group and the route list. How about the trunk itself? Here's the eventual target for the egressing of this call. Transformed call in party number based on the calling party transformation CSS, not changing it. So as the call is leaving the HQ cluster and going over to the backbone cluster, the dialed party is in enterprise format, six digits, and the caller ID is in E164 format. Let's see if the call succeeds, and if so, what happens on that target phone? Um, I need to bring up my Horizon client, and I'm going to minimize this other phone here, and I'm going to bring up the backbone phone. Oops, that's not the right one. That's the one I wanted. So here's my 5001 phone. This is the backbone phone here, and this IP communicator is my HQ phone. So I should be able to dial. Okay, your call cannot be completed as dialed. As far as my HQ call manager is concerned, it looks to me like the digits are being manipulated correctly as I'm egressing. The only other thing I would want to check on the um, on the HQ side is is the trunk going to that backbone up and running, and we can certainly take a look at that. Let's take a quick peek because I actually haven't looked. Oh, I don't have SIP options ping up, so. Um, I can't really tell. Well, okay. At this point, without SIP options ping, in order to note whether or not the backbone uh, call manager cluster is even getting this call, I would probably look like in the real time monitoring tool, the trace files. I can tell you that it, it should be, or it probably is. So, what I'm going to do is log into this backbone cluster. And we're just going to do straight up digit manipulation here, or digit analysis here. I do have the dialed number analyzer um, up on the backbone cluster, so let's get into that. And in this case, we use the HQ to see what was egressing, egressing HQ towards backbone. On the backbone dialed number analyzer, I'm going to say, well, let's just assume that HQ sent me that. What's it going to do on an inbound basis? So I'm going to analyze a trunk. This allows me to do inbound calls from a trunk. Which trunk is receiving this call? Well, it would be the one coming from HQ. That should be. Am I in the right system? It should be that one. OK. So what's the call ing party? The call ing party was uh, plus 1, 201, 201, 2001. And the dial digits are 8, 4, 5, 000, and 1. Let's do analysis. Hmm, says route this pattern. Cool. We like this. What's the call flow? Well, oh, I, don't, I went into the same one again, didn't I? Oh, I mean, I was wondering why that was strange. Okay, HTTPS 10.15.1.15 DNA. No wonder I was confused. I was like, why is the backbone trunk on the backbone cluster, right? That doesn't make any sense. Let me try that again. I should have an HQ trunk here, which is why I was confused. There we go, HQ trunk. And again, call ing party plus 1, 201, 201, 2001. Dial digits, 8, 4, 5, 001. Do analysis. Block this pattern. 
Now we know this is supposed to be good information. So if this trunk is indeed receiving this information from the HQ cluster, and it is, the, this backbone cluster doesn't know what to do with it. It's an unallocated number. I don't have any matches, don't really have any call flow. Well, that's not really helping us then, is it? Hmm, okay. Well, the first thing we would wanna do then is see, well, is there anything in there that has the, um, um, alternate matches, we shouldn't have anything. Um, is there anything in my um, system that would be, um, that would be, uh, uh, you know, that would have these numbers, the eight, four, five thousand one. Is there anything in there that would have that? Okay. Um, let's go back into the backbone cluster here. That's this guy. And let's take a look at the route plan report. For anything that starts with, because we want we to deal with the target number first, right? Let's see anything that starts with eight, four, five. Excuse me. Oh, you know what? Let's just find everything, shall we? Oh, right. Okay. Gee, I don't have anything eight four five thousand one, do I? What does this tell us? The dialed number analyzer told us that the receiving cluster couldn't process the call. And what I see here is that there isn't anything that starts with 845. So what must be happening is that as the call is ingressing towards the backbone call manager, that the digits are being manipulated. So let's take a look at it step by step on ingress. On the trunk itself, on this backbone cluster, the one coming from HQ, do I have a called and calling party transformation? I don't have any called party transformations, but I do have a calling party transformation. And you know what? That's fine, but we're not really worried about caller ID at the moment. The call should succeed with the wrong caller ID. Why is that? Because it's obviously not working. Um, I think I was supposed to make an edit here. Backbone CSS, excuse me for just a second. I know it's doing like a stripping and then a remapping, but I don't remember what it's doing. So how about, um, it could be the trunk too. Unfo I, I'm, I'm unable to show you this at the moment. I, I, like I said, I was having problems with my getting my systems set up. So I was unable to, to look at that. Let's try a different one. Um, let's try calling from, I've got a, a BR1, um, wrap hammer, show everything in the backbone call in party out. Where the partition. Yeah, I'm not sure. I gotta figure that figure that one out. Sorry, my apologies. Um, okay, so we're gonna be trying a call instead. Sorry, from uh, this call manager over here, which is a different cluster again, going over back to that that uh, backbone call manager. In this case, again, I should be able to dial inter cluster. That would be this guy. And I should be able to dial that same eight, oops. And the, the, the call doesn't work. Now, if I were to pull up trace files or a ladder diagram, I would see in this particular case that I'm gonna get a 404 not found. 
let's start with DNA on egress and see if we can't figure out what's going on. HTTPS 10.1.7.15 DNA. And again, I'm going to have a phone. Which phone? My first phone of my two phones in this cluster. And it is going to use line one to dial 845,000N1. What's it going to do? It says route this pattern. OK, that's good. It's matching an 845. That sounds awesome. What's it going to do from there? Well, I've got this route pattern. Um, if I look at called and calling party transforms, calling party is 3001, called party looks good. OK, so far, so good. Looking at the route list gives me the route group. I got my original information here again. Let's take a look at call ing party. Still 3001. And let's take a look at called party. Now, this is a little bit obscure, but notice what's happening here. I didn't do digit manipulation at the route pattern level, so I have to continue down through all the steps. And I can see at the route group level, I'm masking the called party into something that doesn't exist. This, my, my phone over there is 5001 at 5002. This is in there uh, to, to show you that digit manipulation can ha uh, happen at all of these, excuse me, all of these steps. So what I need to do on my BR1 cluster is to get rid of this mask at the route group. Let's do that. Actually, route list, I'm sorry. Route hunt, route list find. It's the one going over to the backbone. And as I add the route group into the route list, I am modifying the dialed party. Let's stop that. And let's try the call again. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Okay. Still not working. At this point, though, if I redo my dialed number analyzer on the BR1 cluster, I would see that as this call is flowing out my route list and my route group, that I am no longer changing the called party. It's going out to the SIP trunk. I'm not changing called party. So at this point, the problem must be ingress on the backbone. So let's take a look. This is the dialed number analyzer for my backbone cluster again. And I'm going to do a new analysis, a new trunk. It's going to be the trunk coming in from BR1, so this trunk here. And if the call ing party is 3001, because that's what it says, and the dial digits are 845001, what are you going to do? Block this pattern unallocated number. It's not matching anything on an inbound basis. So again, on my backbone, I have to figure out why this is happening. Oh yeah, of course I started the services because the, um, the phone is registered. I've got something else going on on this backbone. Anyway. And forgive me, I'm on the, I have to, I would, I'm have to dig around. I, I still missed some kind of step in here, and I'm not sure what it was. But that does not detract from the underlying idea that we are able to use these systems, the route plan report and the dialed number analyzer, to do analysis of our systems. Um, I'm like thinking to myself, does the trunk not have a calling search space? That's entirely possible. No, it has a calling search space. I'm not sure why it's not working. It's supposed to. Um, let me take a look real quick and see if I can't figure this out. Has the backbone number in it. And 
and there it is. Not sure why. I'm not sure why that's not working, but it's supposed to. It's the caller ID we're supposed to be messing with. Anyway, all right. So um, despite not being able to finish our troubleshooting because I've got trunk issues, um, this did uh, show how to use the route plan report in the dialed number analyzer to, to do these sorts of analyses. We saw the entire grid of the dialed number analyzer in particular and how to read each step. The key thing to remember when you're looking at the route, the, the dialed number analyzer is original information and transformed information, and you got to look at each step. The route plan report itself can show us all things that are dialable in our system, and then we can start digging around and see if we can't find a particular thing. And that is what I have for this session. Um, who has questions about the route plan report or the dialed number analyzer or anything else you would like to see? Thanks. Have a good day, everybody.